Insights with Terry Coots, a weekly look through the eyes of predictive astrologer Terry Coots. Here's Terry. Hi, everyone. This is Terry, and you're listening to Insights with Terry Coots. Thank you so much for joining me this week of May the 16th through the 22nd. I really appreciate your time. It's a real gift. So what is happening for this week? We've got some really interesting things with the planets this week. Well, I guess every week's interesting, isn't it? And especially lately, things have been happening really, really quickly. Hang on to your seatbelt. So some of the things I wanted to discuss is a retrograde. We've, we've talked about this retrograde that we have in Mercury right now quite a few times. And if you're interested, you can go to uh, the website uh, that Charlie O'Brien has kindly put up and he has archived some of the past podcasts so if you want to catch up on some of the mercury retrograde that we've talked about you can go and find it there but just looking at some of the things that we have available to us the learning relearning redoing in retrograde in the in the ancient times when mercury was retrograde it um, was believed that it was traveling through the underworld maybe uncovering hidden messages, uh, things that we'd lost in intuitive insights or some of the higher truths. It's suggested by some astrologers that this isn't a good time to sign a contract or book travel plans or make uh, big life decisions when Mercury is going retrograde because when it starts to go forward, then all those hidden things come to light and we have a higher understanding of the truth, a very, very different perspective, and we have a different feeling on how we want to proceed. So sometimes uh, it's not in our best interest to be doing that when it's in retrograde, but it is a great time to look at the past. Now, it's considered by some to be unlucky. I, I don't look at it that way. Yes, there are miscommunications. That's a given. And mishaps. Uh, we tend to drop things. Uh, we tend to stumble. We tend to fall because our, we're just not processing properly. But if we can think of it rather as a different energetic expression, that might be a better way to look at it. So, oh, I would say to... Um, through the, through the ages, I have kind of tracked Mercury retrograde to see what kind of life changes uh, happens during that time for most people. Is it more for mercurial people, which are Geminis or Virgos? Now, it just depends on where it is in your, tra you know, in your chart. And as you can see here, <laughs> I'm struggling for words. I'm a Virgo. My ruling planet is Mercury. Anytime there's a Mercury retrograde, as it is right now, I can't find the right words. I stumble. It's harder to organize my thoughts uh, because it's a, like a brain fog. And no matter how much I try, I am not eloquent and I tend to miscommunicate. That's typical of Mercury retrograde. And it usually happens three to four times a year. Striking terror. <laughs> In my heart because I talk for a living so it's natural it's normal uh, really when we have this ebb and flow of mercury retrograde I do try to plan not to talk publicly during this time but you know it's a rhythm it's something that uh, that sometimes we just have to get through so the challenge when mercury is retrograde is that we're impatient and we can be very impatient with this we can tend to have a lot of mental clutter and maybe ignore our intuition, maybe push forward without all the facts. We might fail to communicate clearly, as I'm clearly doing right now, and don't try to mess around with technology. My iPhone was just playing games with me today. The little icon for retrieving messages completely disappeared. Where'd it go? How did it even go anywhere? So the only thing to do, shut it off, let it, give it a second chance, let it try again. But I, I am terrified 
uh, to work around electronics during this time because for me it's a given it's not going to work the way I'm used to and then a whole new set of things can pop up. It's important to remember that everybody can experience a mercury retrograde and its effect very very differently but it does try to make us pay attention to it so it, it wants us to slow down it wants us to pause because it has to go stationary then it goes retrograde then it goes stationary again and then it goes forward so it's a pause and it wants us to listen to our subconscious and our intuition you know we're always in a rush it's a constant slew of thoughts and our mind racing and it's hard to pause and to really pay attention to some of the messages that mercury is trying to unearth for us so i know myself during this time um, i know i have to pay attention but it's hard to stop that long so it's a good time to go back over things to review to reflect on some of our own past, some of the past of our history, some of the past of humans, old projects, old relationships, even sometimes that can come back into our lives if we look at this and maybe are willing to revisit some of it. So you look around in your life and see if there's any unfinished, unfinished there we go, unfinished business that needs to be resolved. Or maybe a final lesson that we need to be mastering. I find for myself it's always boundaries. It is always boundaries. Now this is the second Mercury retrograde of our 2022. And as I had said earlier, it began on the 10th of May. Um, anybody that's sensitive could have felt it could be two weeks ahead of time. I started to significantly feel it a week ahead of time, but I was suspicious two weeks ahead of time. So we also had an eclipse, both solar and we're having a lunar eclipse this weekend. Uh, technically Monday, but we'll feel it this weekend. And eclipses are thought of as portals. And, and it's already a sense of, of time for most people. So having Mercury dip its toes into that underworld during this window of heightened sensitivity, who knows what could happen? And then we had Friday the 13th. Holy Toledo! <laughs> so Mercury is the ruler of the mind and it's our processing. So sometimes we can feel this mental fogginess intensify during this time, both the eclipses and this retrograde. I am I'm I'm an I'm a testament to it. Honestly, I couldn't talk my way out of a wet paper bag right now. So we may find that it's really hard to make sense of how we feel, what we're thinking, what our intuition is trying to communicate to us. Personally, trying to figure out what's going on with with Russia, trying to figure out with what's going on with all the things that have happened, the abortion discussions, the, the gentleman that just went and shot up one of the grocery stores in Buffalo. My mind is breaking. I can't wrap my mind around this. It's very hard to make sense. And that's what this retrograde is supposed to help us try to do or make us want to do at least anyway. For this reason we're supposed to move slowly we're supposed to be patient and try to use this energy to pause before rushing ahead into something signing a bill um, making a movement uh, any of that and eclipses tend to guide us to the next best step anyway so it's really a period of surrender and trust trusting the flow now, there is a blood moon on the 15th. Now, I'm recording this for the 16th. So actually, technically, I'm doing this today, the 15th of May. So it's supposed to happen tonight. And it's supposed to be really red. I think if I heard correctly, from 10 o'clock until midnight, it'll slowly turn from a white moon to a red moon. And so it's 
it's ending and closing a cycle and mercury retrograde can assist us in this process by unearthing some of the deeper insights and intuitive messages that we're supposed to be receiving and understanding now on the surface mercury retrograde can slow things down and create delays but any extra time that we're given can be used as a gift if we choose to do that so it's right now in Gemini so that mercury retrograde is in Gemini which is that communicative energy field and it's that intensifies it because Mercury's Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini so we have a Mercury ruled planet and zodiac sign in Mercury going backwards and an eclipse woohoo now it's gonna go into Taurus but it'll still be going retrograde uh, Taurus the bull you know solid so we we can feel things settle a bit that bill the bull is a solid energy field before it goes direct and it'll be going direct again on June the 3rd so just keep in mind the pause the time to reflect the time to communicate it as well as we can or try to think about how could we communicate when this moves forward so part of being a good communicator is learning how to listen so if we need and we have any difficult conversations we have to be very careful what we say and that we listen so we have to try really hard to align ourselves with our heart's intention first and then allow the words to flow from the place of the heart so we have a lot of that now I'm going to discuss the Taurus retrograde uh, when it happens but we've got a, we've got a, a few days before that's going to happen so we'll talk about that then there's enough to talk about now the number that has been given to us for this week is the number nine now that seems to be very compatible as far as I'm concerned with the energy fields that we have above because number nine characteristics are usually idealistic approach towards ourselves towards our surroundings now that can be good and that can be hard because when we're idealistic sometimes we want too much we we yearn for too much and then nothing really satisfies us because it doesn't live up to our expectations so maybe we have to look at our expectations so sometimes when number nine comes up there's a possible journey that can help us gain experience now that depends right I mean you could take a physical journey and a lot of people are doing that uh, against all odds getting passports and things that they need but we could take a mini journey maybe out to the bush or in our kayak or in the car and to maybe meet our mission to to look at what's coming for us that lunar eclipse is in Sagittarius and that Sagittarius energy is very spiritual so it's a real opportunity to get us in touch with that spiritual side not just religion spirituality and it's a higher level of mental energy so be prepared we might be thinking a lot and spending a lot of time um, really really thinking 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 so we can become more devoted to our goals we can become more sensitive and courageous we can take on responsibility with this number nine offers that that spirituality without as much of a need for high material security so there's more trust there's more faith with this so we might not realize the depth of our wisdom but we're coming to it so it's offering us that opportunity to love to love the truth love our friendships it's all so important at this time and they're going to show us how important it is to be strong the need to give much of ourselves to each other that's the spirituality fulfilling and closing cycles the readiness that we need to advance now the weakness of number nine is the tendency towards delusion so we have to be really careful of that because you know sometimes in religious matters some people can be very delusional not everybody some people and extremely emotional 
and kind of moody <laughs> and exaggerated in their reactions or their thoughts or their opinions. So that's a weakness of number nine. We have to be careful and guard against that. And there may be a tendency for emotional stress and mental excess. So just be careful. Just, just keep an eye on that. Through the week, this week, our, our vulnerability will be our liver, the hip area, the pelvis area, the thighs, the top of the thighs, and the sacrum. Our backbone and our joints and especially the knees for people that have Capricorn energy. So it's an energy field that we may be a little achy, be a little bit more swollen, more inflammation, a little bit sore in certain joints. So just take care of that and don't challenge your liver because liver is going to struggle for the first part of this week. So if you have a vulnerability in the liver area, don't mess with it. It doesn't want to be messed with. The animal totem that was given to us this week is the finch. And you know how the finch bops around. So the finch, when it's offered to us, increases opportunities for us to experience maybe a variety of different activities that we have not previously engaged in or haven't thought of. So this is a great opportunity to try something new. And everything is amplified when we have the finch as a totem. So life, be prepared, is going to become a little bit more active. You know how that finch flits here, 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 here. So just be prepared for that. So hopefully the universe knows what it's doing and gives us the energy to be more active. So we won't need that noon nap. So that's it for us this week, the 16th through the 22nd, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. If you're interested in booking a reading for yourself personally, my number that you can phone or text is 519-726-6699 or you can email me at terry, T-E-R-R-I dot coot, C-O-U-T-T-S at gmail.com. And, and thanks again for listening and thank you to Charlie for putting us on Spotify Podcasts, Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, Amazon Music Podcasts, and now YouTube. He sends a link to me and then I pass it on through Facebook. Or you can just ask me for it and I'd be happy to email it to you. So you can get us on the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast normally. Thanks again for joining me. Hopefully with everything going right, we'll talk to each other next week. You have a wonderful week, everybody, and take care of those opportunities. Bye for now. You've been listening to Insights with Terry Coots and visit her website, terryworld.com, T-E-R-R-I world.com. And we'll catch you next time 